Welcome to Learned in Go-Go, the podcast. Hey guys, it is Wednesday night and I am your host, Sydney A. I'm also the author of Everything I Need to Know, I Learned in Go-Go, How a Preacher's Daughter Pole Danced Her Way to Finding Her True Self. And I am super excited to be here with you guys tonight. Sorry, it's a little bit later than I had scheduled. Um, We like to watch Agatha all along. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that show, uh, but it ran a little bit later than I was expecting. So yay, already getting comments. I love you guys. Aaron and Lizzie are here. Hey, 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 hey. And Kyler's here. Hey, hey. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, Yeah, so as usual, I have nothing fully planned. I just want to see where the conversation takes us. So let me know, what are you guys watching lately? Um, Like I said, I was just watching Agatha all along. I really liked WandaVision. So it was kind of a natural progression to get into that show. Before that, I was watching um, a documentary on Miss Cleo. So like, I'm all over the place. Oh, thank you so much, Kyler. He said, it's my favorite author. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, I really very much appreciate all of you who have taken the time to read my book. It means so much to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, And if you haven't yet, you can pick up your copy available in paperback and ebook at learnedingogo.com. So I appreciate that. That is so awesome. All right. So Kyler is watching Dexter. I want to watch Dexter. It is on my list of things that have kind of gone past me that I need to go back and watch. I love Michael C. Hall. Um, I was a huge Six Feet Under fan. I don't know if any of you guys liked Six Feet Under, but that show was so good and just wrapped me into it. And I will swear forever that that was the best series finale of any show ever was six feet under. So if you haven't seen that yet, I highly, highly, highly recommend six feet under. And I do want to watch Dexter. I feel like I've watched two or three episodes. Um, I love the concept of the show, but for whatever reason, I kind of fell off of it there and I need to pick it back up again. So thank you for that reminder for sure. Uh, Erica is watching Criminal Minds. Again, I've never never seen that one either, but it's one that's popular. So I know the name. I'm just not familiar with the show. Aaron is rewatching Spartacus. Now, is that a show or is that a movie? Because when I hear Spartacus, I think of a movie. Um, Not familiar with the show. Um, But then (laughs) you guys know me mind to mouth. I just was thinking about the birdcage with Agadar Spartacus. (laughs) That's such a great freaking uh, role. You know, like, who was it? Hank Azaria plays it. Hilarious, hilarious character. Okay, Erica says, oh my God, you need to watch Dexter. That's why I watched it. it was because of Michael C. Hall. Yes, it was the best finale of all time. Absolutely. Michael C. Hall was so good in Six Feet Under. And um, I think the, the thing that drew me into it initially was the the stories behind the people. If you're unfamiliar, it takes place in a funeral home. That's why it's called Six Feet Under. But every show would open up with um, like kind of a story about the deceased person that they were working on. And even if it wasn't like a creepy story or something, it kind of had a Tales from the Crypt feel to it. Maybe because they wound up in the funeral home. I'm not sure. Um, But I think that kind of pulled me into it initially and then I just got caught up in the characters it was really good um oh yeah Erica named her cat Dexter after Dexter such a great like character um so let's see oh I love Michael C. Hall in 
Dexter. Yes. And then there was there was a new Dexter too, right? Did they they come back with another variation on Dexter? Um, that's where you go. Oh, Aaliyah is joining us too. Hey, sweetie. Welcome to the pod, eh? We are here. Um, yeah, so I've been like all over the place with with my TV watching lately. Have you guys seen the Menendez Brothers, um, the Netflix one? Because I just got caught up in that. Um, and it was really good. And I was, I remember when the Menendez thing happened. Like I remember the initial, you know, shootings and, excuse me, <laughs> and the the whole trial and everything when it first came out. I still don't know what I believe. And the bottom line is we're never going to know what actually happened like in that house. But it was like a really good series. Um, but I've been singing Millie Vanilli for days because like the background, the soundtrack to it was Millie Vanilli. So that got stuck in my head. Um, but it was really good. It was a good, uh, good series. So if you're into true crime, like I'm very into true crime, then you will probably enjoy it as well. Um, Aaron, yes, Aaron and Lizzie have been filming today. I saw your posts. Um, so they're working on their scenes for The Curse of the Ghost Rider, which I am also in, and a lot of my friends are in as well. And I'm super excited to see you guys' scenes. You looked great in the posts that I saw. Um, super exciting project. So I'm very excited for that. And uh, you guys all have to watch it when it comes out. Oh, and Kyler is working at a haunt. And I love that the haunt, the haunting is going great. And my birthday was a blast. I'm so glad. That is awesome. Uh, Kyler just had a birthday. Aaron has a birthday coming up. So many October activities. This is really cool. Um, are you guys, wait a minute, <laughs> minus the cracked rib. Are you okay? What happened? Tell us in the comments. Cracked rib sounds horrible. Oof. Um, are you guys like big Halloween decorators? Are you ready for Halloween? Tell me what your normal Halloween time looks like because um, my husband and I just got our outdoor decorations out. I've had the indoor ones up for a couple weeks, but um, this seemed to be the year to wish a lot of my decorations adieu because <laughs> I took them out of the bins and they just like fell apart and some of them fell apart. Like I have a, a nice size little cute scarecrow and his pants fell off. So I had to like safety pin them back up because we don't have that kind of neighborhood. I was this close to sticking a pumpkin where his butt would be. So he'd be kind of like mooning a pumpkin, but we have a lot of kids and I didn't want to get a, a note. So I just safety pinned his pants back on and, um, I forget there was some another decoration that I had to fix before I could put up, but some of them, like I had one, he's a little zombie head and he's got the arms that stick out and he did have like the big flowing kind of cape and um, also kind of like a fishnet that went over the cape and the cape just literally disintegrated off of him. But I put him up anyway, cause he still looks cool. He's like a head and an arm and a fishnet. But then I had a sugar skull that was made out of, I don't, it was almost like a paper board. It kind of looked like wood, but I think it was more like, it wasn't even particle board. It was like a step cheaper than that. And I took him out of the, <laughs> the bin and like all of his limbs just fell off. So I guess that means it's time to start saving up for some more Halloween decorations because I love Halloween and I love decorating. I have a couple animatronics that... I like putting it out. The neighborhood kids all love to come and see them. So let me know what you guys do as far as getting decorated for Halloween. And do you get trick-or-treaters where you live? So let's go to Kyler and his cracked rib story because I want to know what the heck happened. I fell on the chainsaw. Thankfully, no chain on it. Got a nasty bruise and have a small cracked rib. Please be careful. Oh my gosh, sweetie. I hope that heals soon because I've had a cracked rib before and it's awful. So I hope that yours is uh, 
not too painful that you, you know, got some fun painkillers or something, but be careful because that's very dangerous. Uh, Aaliyah says, no, I just watch a bunch of ring videos about people wrecking decorations. It's rotten. Oh no. Like, right. Okay. At first I thought you meant the ring, like the movie, but now I know what you mean about the ring doorbell. And I don't know why people do that. Like, that's just mean. Decorations are, uh, you know, they're, they're expensive, honestly, like have some more respect for other people's shit. Don't break stuff. Lizzie says, LOL, nope, we live at the end of a dirt road. Nobody ever comes down here on purpose. <laughs> it's funny because I just knowing where you guys live, I kind of was picturing that, that you guys lived on like a spacious place. Um, like we're in a neighborhood. And when we first moved in, our kids were little. And it was like our kids and my youngest best friend who lived next door and then maybe a couple other kids. And that was it in the whole neighborhood. And now my kids are all adults, but a bunch of new families have moved in with little kids and it's so much fun. Like I love giving out candy and seeing the little kids all dressed up. They're so cute. And I'm glad that we have this resurgence of little kids in the neighborhood so that I can enjoy Halloween because we give out the full size candy bars. So <laughs> they like to come to our house. Aaron says, people would regret messing with our Halloween decorations. I bet they would. I bet they would. And Ali is agreeing that it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And even silly things. I know the price of everything's gone up and everybody complains about that. But I wanted to get colored hairspray. And like the little thing that I saw at Walmart today was $2.50. But I, the Walmart didn't have the color that I wanted. I think I got it at... Dollar General is like eight bucks and it's a little tiny thing of colored hairspray. Makes no sense. And I want to get one of those, um, they're like the couple stories high skeletons. I think they're so cool, but I just don't know how you store that because it's like a big dude. But I've seen them around and people decorate them all year. So I would have fun doing that, like making him a Santa hat or like a leprechaun outfit and just like all year long, um, get them all decorated. I think that would be fun. Oh, excuse me. I am so like, you know what it is? I have baked beans for dinner. So I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to be very burpy. Um, Kyler says, we have decorations. I'm going to be working on Halloween. You work carefully, sir. No more cracked ribs, please. Oh, yes, Aaron and Lizzie's anniversary is Halloween. Happy anniversary. That's awesome. Yep, and Lizzie says $8 is too much, right? It's a tiny little can. And I don't know if you guys can see because I tried to dye my hair purple. And the, the box showed dark brown to black hair. And it showed what it's supposed to look like. And this ain't it. So... That's why I got the hairspray because the, the hair dye did not work. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm doing a networking event on the 18th and I'm super excited about it. And a lot of people are cosplaying, but um, I just want to do like something like spooky. So that's why I wanted to do because I'm going to be wearing like black on black on black on black. So I wanted my hair to stick out. So that's why I got like the purple hairspray. Um and we'll see if it works. I had a burgundy one a couple of years ago and that worked. So here's hoping. Um, and then I have another photo shoot on the 23rd. So I'm thinking if my granny hairs come in because they're starting to, I'll just do dark brown for the photo shoot because I don't want my hair to fall out. That's what happened <laughs> to me in college. I dyed it so many times that it literally like you could go like that and it would break off. And uh, my former sister-in-law was a hairdresser. And when I came home for break, I was like, could you fix my hair? And she goes, I'll, ju I'll just cut off everything that's damaged. And we'll just, you know, leave you with what's left that's not damaged. I had a pixie cut. I had wrecked my hair so bad <laughs> that everything was gone. So I don't want to do that again. Um, yeah, Erica says, yeah, no, it's hard with dark hair. It is, and I don't want to bleach it 
because this is already like 18 layers of hair color. Like I will, I'll lose it if I try to bleach it. Um, and Lizzie says the boxes lie. Absolutely. It'll show better in the sun, but other than that, nope, that's why mine is super dead from bleaching. And that's what I get tempted. I get so tempted to bleach it, but I know, I know what happens to my hair. It just is terrible bleached. And it's funny because where my grays were, that was really purple. And then everything else is kind of like, wah, wah, wah. so let's, oh, on the 18th, Lizzie and I are going to show up on the goddamn program. Aha. Very cool. Although it might not actually be on the 18th. So we'll talk about that later. Um, cause yeah, cause of my networking event, but maybe, you know, something I don't. So we'll talk about that later, but I know you're going to be on the goddamn program and that's going to be super duper fun. I can't wait for that. Cause you guys rock. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm excited about like all this new stuff going on. So put in the comments, what is new? What can we celebrate that is going on with you guys? Like Aaron and Lizzie were filming today. Big celebrations for that. That is so awesome. And I cannot wait to see you guys part in the movie. And uh, I just, I'm so excited for this movie to get together so we can all watch it. You know what I mean? Like it's so awesome. Um, but yeah, there's so many projects going on that my friends are doing, and I'm just so psyched for all of you. And even if you're not doing movies or, you know, have your own podcast or something like, what's something that we can be like, whoa, you know, like and celebrate for you? Uh, let's see. Yes, I know the 18th is your birthday, sir. I know. Uh, let's see, me becoming an old man day. Well, how old are you going to be? Because I, th I think I'm older than you. Pretty sure I'm older than you, Aaron. And Kyler says, I sadly missed the program this week. Feckin' tired was drinking with friends. Well, I was I was uh, not home for the project, for the project, for the, the goddamn program this week. And I brought all of my podcasting stuff up with me. But um, since I was on a little bit of a vacation with my husband, we started drinking early. So by the time the program came around, <laughs> I'm not even sure what we were talking about at this point. It was a good time, but I should probably go back and watch the podcast and see, <laughs> see what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, yes, 45. I am older than you. That's not old. Not old at all. And Lizzie says on the 19th, they'll be in San Antonio promoting Killer Cox. Busy, busy month. Yes, that is a uh, another movie project. Super excited that you guys are doing Killer Cox. Um, and if you guys are not familiar, if you go on my Sydney author page, I know I've, I've shared posts about it there. Or you can just go to the Killer Cox just when you thought it was safe to go back to the coop page and see all about it. Um, I know that I shared the trailer on my page and it's hilarious. So you can go to YouTube and see the trailer. They're, they've been trying to up the views on it. So if you haven't seen it yet, please go to YouTube and just watch the trailer to help the views go up on that. That would be awesome. Uh, Kyler is asking, how much did Beast drink? Beast was not on the show. He had a prior commitment. Um, it was me and Candy Sizzle and the Defiler of the Crown were the hosts, in other words, Reaper and uh, Cody. And we had a really good time. Uh, we all wore makeup. I had on sugar skull makeup and uh, Reaper had on his Reaper makeup and Cody had on his makeup. It was pretty cool. So definitely if you guys haven't seen it, you can go back and watch that. That should also be on my Sydney author page. Um, and if not, it's on the Reaper's underground page. There are so many pages, so many things to follow. Um, but it was a really good time and it was, you know, we, we go and we watch the videos and comment on them and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun. And Cody had just been at a concert and was talking about how in Tennessee it was like in the nineties and he was sweating his balls off. So here it's not, um, that hot. We're starting to get fall weather, which I'm very much enjoying, 
I know some of you live where it is super duper hot, so hopefully you get some relief soon. Um, but I'm looking forward to fire pits and, you know, like sitting in the house by the fireplace and that smell of like campfire burning leaves smell that I love that is just fall. Um, so hopefully you guys can experience that soon. And uh, I don't have any concerts coming up in the near future, I don't think. I'm going to Rocky Horror Picture Show in Philly at the end of the month, and I'm going to meet Barry Boswick, which is pretty cool. I'm just saying it like that because the way that they advertised it made it seem like we were meeting Barry Boswick and Patricia Quinn and Nell Campbell. But it's just Barry Boswick, which is cool. But I saw him live last year, so I was really kind of hoping it was Mel Campbell because I fucking love her. Um, but I'm excited to meet him anyway and to do the Time Warp live with the Transylvania Nipple Productions Shadowcast, who is fantastic. I saw them last year as well. But I don't have a concert concert in my uh, soon-to-be future. So if you guys are have plans to go to any concerts, put them in the comments. If you are a Rocky Horror Picture fan, please put that in the comments because I fucking love it. Let's see here. Oh, Aaron is planning on a certain reverend to show up when he does the show. If you guys are not familiar with um, the Legend of Bloody Bones, follow Aaron's page and check that out because that is yet another super cool film project. Uh, Kyler is excited for cold nights. Is it hot where you are? Are you doing like haunts all dressed up and sweating your bazongas off? Because that, that's terrible. Lizzie says we're getting fall weather in Texas. Texas barely hit 90 today. <laughs> I guess your fall weather is different than mine in Texas for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know how you guys deal with the heat all that time. Like I like it in the summer, but then I like when fall hits and it's not that way anymore. So God bless you guys. Like, that's... Oh, Kyler said one of his birthday gifts. He's going to go see Metallica. Awesome. Very cool. They were my first concert that was a not Christian band concert. I went and I saw Metallica, Danzig, and Suicidal Tendencies in the 90s. And that was a show. Let me tell you. That was a lot of fun. Um, so that was... I hope you enjoy it. I hope that they're still rocking out. That's awesome. And I, I saw that they were touring, but I can't remember who they're touring with. So you can put that in the uh, the comments too. Erica says it's 56 degrees in Cincy. Let me check my weather up. I want to see what it is here. It is. Do, 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 do. I need like the Jeopardy music. It's 56 here too. Check that out. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys are familiar with the app. It's called what the forecast and you can set it to cuss or not cuss. Um, but it gives you the, the current weather, the high, the low and everything and says things like this. It says it's fucking dark outside. This might be the perfect night for ghost busting. You don't happen to have a proton pack, do you? So that's what my weather app says, but it's 56. Um, Let's say yes. Lizzie says, Rocky Horror. We met a few of them. That is so awesome. Yes, that is like definitely in my top three groovy movies of all time. I've seen it live hundreds of times. I've seen it live in the theater 25, 30 times maybe. Um, but recently, my older brother who introduced me to the Rocky Horror Picture Show at my sixth grade slumber party, he came down with <laughs> a bootleg VHS tape of it that somebody took in the theater with their video camera and had us act out the whole thing. And I've been hooked ever since. Um, so he and I have been going the last Friday of the month to Delaware. They, they have a shadow cast and they, they do it live and it's been so much fun. Like just having the full live experience. Um, and then this month we skip, you know, we're skipping the Delaware one for the Philly one for the VIP. So that's really cool. But I used to go with him all the time when I was younger, you know, we'd go to the theater and watch it. And it was just so much fun. Like, yeah, Erica said she'd love to see it at the theater. I wish you were closer. That'd be so fun to come with us. Uh, hey, Tanya's here. Hey, sweetie. 
I'm looking forward to baby's first Halloween. I cannot wait to see pictures of that sweet baby. Oh, and Halloween costume, so cute. Oh, Kyler says Metallica suicidal tendencies in Pantera. Oh, is that who it is now? So you're getting to see two thirds of my first concert. That is pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, and Aaron says we're a bit, we're a good bit obsessed with Rocky Horror. Me too. And I am proud that I have passed it along to my children as well. I took the kids to the theater to see it a few years ago. I don't remember how many. And uh, the, it didn't have a live cast or anything. It was just a regular AMC movie theater was showing it. So I said, okay. So we, we go and I took... Um, might have just been my two oldest and my nephews, because I think my youngest might have still been just too young at that year. But I'm like, all right, let's go. We're going to have a good time. I said, wait till you hear the, the crowd's going to shout stuff at the screen. You know, it's going to be really cool. There was exactly one person in the crowd that knew the audience participation. I did the entire audience participation for the movie by myself. <laughs> It's a good thing I wasn't shy, you know, like I just, I literally did all the lines by myself. Not one other person in the theater knew any of the lines. So that was an experience. And then the next time we went, I took my brother with me and uh, the two of us, like there were a couple other people shouting some lines, but we had like everybody doing the windshield wipers, you know, like everything. So I was like, AMC should totally pay us and we can just come do all the shows and be the audience participation. Why not? You know, it was a lot of fun. Let's see. Oh, Erica says she doesn't know if they do it. She'll have to look it up. Oh, and is the musical, is it just the Rocky Horror Show? Because that's originally, before they made it a movie, it was a stage production. And Tim Curry was in it in London. And that's, I guess that's how he got picked to be Frank and Furter in the movie. And I am so very grateful that he did. I love him. Um, okay, I'm going to have to click that link later because I'm in StreamYard. I don't think I can click it. Well, let me see. Let me, if I disappear, I'll be right back. I'm going to click on this link and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, yeah, I will check it, I'll check it out after the show. I might be able to click on it in the comments on Facebook. Uh, oh, wait, let me go to Facebook. Let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. I don't see it playing on Facebook. I see last week's. My goodness. I'm telling you guys. By the time it gets to be, I'm going to have to have like an early afternoon podcast because I get so tired. There we go. Okay. So I'm clicking on the link and it's loading twice. Everybody's still here? Okay. Let's see here. Yes, the Rocky Horror Show. Yes, that's the stage show version of it. And I have never seen the Rocky Horror Show yet. I would love to see it, but I have not um, gotten a chance to. Let's see. <laughs> Aaliyah says, why do I have a flag by my name? Did I do something wrong? I don't see a flag, sweetie. You have a flag by your name? No, yeah. even on Facebook, I don't see it. So maybe that's just on your end. I don't know. Maybe it's like Eddie Izzard. I've claimed you as my friend because I have a flag. <laughs> yep, it is a musical, just like the movie. Um, you know, all the, I'm sure all the songs from the movie were originally in the musical. Uh, so I definitely would love to see the stage show um, just to see what the difference is. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm curious about it. And I feel like it has been in, like, um, there's a theater in New Hope, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you guys are familiar with New Hope. It's a pretty well-known kind of, uh, like, cool vibe town. And I think it's Bucks County theaters up there. And they, they show things like that sometimes. So I will keep an eye out so that I can go check that out. Okay, Elise says it's a white flag. I don't see it. Let's see. Oh, wait, no, Erica's got a flag too. Oh, because you're a milestone follower. At least that's what it says on Erica's. I don't see one on yours. 
then maybe it's, you know, it's because you're a milestone flat follower. We're going to say that. I don't see it, but I believe it. <laughs> I don't know. Facebook's getting so weird with all of their, you know, like different, uh, different. Okay. Now my sister, hi, sissy, says that she has a flag too. What is with all the flags? Yes, it says, um, milestone follower when I click on the flag next to your name, Erica, when I'm on Facebook looking at it. Yep, I see Carlin's flag too. That's hilarious. Yeah, if I um, scroll over it, it says milestone follower. Maybe because you guys have been with me since the beginning. And I appreciate you so much. I love you guys. You're awesome. Um, yes, and Carlin says when... <laughs> Erica says shining our freak flag. Yes. <laughs> My sister said when I clicked on it, it says that. Yes. Yeah. You got to let your freak flag fly. That's how we attract our tribe. Um, let's see. Carla says, I, I think you mean you you guys have all been there since day one. That's what I'm going to think that that means. Right. And I do want to thank everybody that joined us last week when my sister was my guest on the podcast for her birthday. That was super fun. Um, and we were all over the place <laughs> last week as far as uh, topics, because that's awesome. And I'm hoping to get some more guests on soon. I'm going to be talking with... Um, somebody super cool. I'm not going to give it away yet, but on Friday, we're going to record an episode talking about my book. And then I will post that episode a little bit later. Um, cause next month I'm going to be in New Orleans for a couple days. And one of them is Wednesday. So I will see what the deal is. If I can do a podcast from where I am. And if not, maybe I will post the episode from Friday then. Um, but yeah, like, we'll just see who else pops up that I can have on as a guest. I do want to, to focus on the book, you know, because that's what the podcast was started about. But we all have so much fun conversations that I'm not just tying it down to the stuff in the book, because um, the whole point of the book is living your best life, you know, like learning from things in your life, trying to find the best path for yourself things like that. So that's, you know, why we all get together on here and we all chat is so that we're all helping each other to be our best selves. I say it all the time. When the tide comes in, all ships rise and our community, we're all here for each other and we're all helping each other rise in our lives. And that's what it's all about. And I love you guys. You are awesome. Carlin said so much fun. You all are the best. See, I was bragging about you guys to my sister and you, you proved me right. Oh, and Lizzie says we had fun. Your sister's awesome. <laughs> and Erica says, I'll let you know if I used it already, but I've been trying to do spooky songs this month for the most part. Okay. Cause she said, I want you to pick a spooky song. So everybody in the comments, put your spooky songs. I'm going to pick, you know what I was listening to the other day? <laughs> And it's so corny and it's stuck in my head and I love it, is the Crypt Jam by the Crypt Keeper. And this is now my second Tales from the Crypt, Crypt reference for this evening. Um, but I was talking with my oldest about Tales from the Crypt because it was way before their time. And they went and bought the entire series on DVD. Like it's like this thick. I think it might be 24 DVDs. And I cannot wait until we can watch it. Um, but the Crip Jam song is like so dated and corny and I love it. So definitely uh, check it out if you're not familiar. Aaron says, couldn't have said it better, Sydney. I love you guys. And that's what we're all here for. We're all here to lift each other up. And you guys are fantastic. I cannot ever overstate how much I appreciate each and every one of you. You rock. And I'm so grateful that you are in my life. Um, and it's so crazy that some of us have not even known each other a year yet, because it seems like we've been family forever, you know, so it's awesome. And I appreciate those of you who have been supporting me on this journey since 
four years ago. God, it's been longer than that. It's been going on almost six years ago when I'm like, I think I want to write a book. <laughs> and it's just been like a roller coaster since then. So, yep, Aaliyah, we have known each other for a while. And I appreciate you so much. You are always, always there. You got my back 100% of the time. And I hope you know I got yours too. I love you. Let's see. So Carlin saying, Thriller by Michael Jackson, Calling All the Monsters, China McLean. I don't know that one, Sissy. Calling All the Monsters. So, wow. Since 2016. Yes. That's been a while. That's awesome. It's going to be our 10-year anniversary before we know it. <laughs> Aaron says, and you've been kicking butt nonstop. I've been trying so hard, my friend. Like, I just, sometimes I just feel like, you ever just feel like your wheels are spinning? But then I, like, take a step back, and I'm like, no, I am getting a lot, a lot accomplished. And I'm proud of myself, because it's da, 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 that circus, you know? <laughs> like, but it's fun, and I appreciate it. I'm grateful. I'm just grateful for all of the opportunities, and you know, I'm having so much fun just learning new things and meeting new people and finding out skills I didn't even know that I had. And I'm just like, this is pretty cool. Like, um, if you guys saw the, the goddamn program this week, that makeup, I, I bought that like that day because Reaper didn't tell me he wanted to do that and I wasn't home. So I didn't have any of like my decent makeup. So I had to go to Walmart and just get something. And I just like, I, I can do a sugar skull, I guess. And I just like drew it on and it came out looking pretty cool. So you never know. Try stuff. And then you might find out that you're pretty good at something. Let's see here. Oh, what's that say? Then when you look up, you've moved. Then when you look up, you've moved. I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Oh, Aaron's putting in a spooky song monster by skillet and OG I put a spell on you okay so do you mean the original I put a spell on you or the Marilyn Manson remake or both who's the original by I know the original I just can't think of who sings it uh let's say oh thank you sissy she said you have come so far sissy you truly inspire me I'm so proud of you I can't wait to see what else you you're going to continue to kick ass. And thank you so much, Sissy. That means the world to me. I love you. We had so much fun last week, guys. Like we, I think my abs still hurt. We laughed so freaking hard. <laughs> it was so nice to get to spend the day with my sister on her birthday. That was so fun. Let's say, Aaliyah says, my nails have sugar skulls. My nails, I'm, I'm embarrassed. They're so yeah. So they're, they're really grown out like they're, but then this one, I lost my, I lost this one earlier guys. Um, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I knocked that one off and this one's like, miss I'm a mess. I am a mess, but, um, I'm going to go get that taken care of tomorrow, but I wanted to have them nice for the 18th and the 23rd. So I was trying to put it off and put it off. And then that's what happens because they're freaking expensive everything's like cuckoo screaming by jay hawkins i don't know that one i'm going to have to look up okay what we need to do is go and make somebody get a pen and a paper and start writing these songs down and we will make our own halloween playlist for erica this is awesome let's see let's see here uh when you're spinning your wheels and think you're stuck, look up and you have accomplished lots. Yes, exactly. Sometimes you just need a new perspective um, to. Oh, is Screaming Jay Hawkins who sang I Put a Spell on You? I thought that was a song name. My bad. I never heard of Screaming Jay Hawkins. I've heard the song, but I haven't. Okay. Good to know. Cool. Yeah, that's a it's a good song. I feel like somebody else did it too, though, other than Marilyn Manson. 
but I don't know who I think like I almost picture like Ann Wilson like but I know it's not but that's kind of the voice I'm hearing in my head um yeah and sorry my train crashed there early I was talking about how awesome it was that you were saying that and then I was like oh shiny so sorry about that um yeah the original I put a spell on you is that from the 70s I'm going to Spotify. Ah, that's it. Erica says Annie Lennox did it. I knew I was hearing a female voice in my head, um, in addition to the original and the Marilyn Manson. So thank you. Um, Aaliyah says, I have ADHD. Excuse me. I would bet that I do. I've never been diagnosed, but the more that I'm reading about women my age getting diagnosed with it, like because it, they've been misdiagnosed with depression and anxiety and all kinds of other things. And then it turns out that it's ADHD. So I don't know. Maybe I should get tested for it. Erica says she has ADD. It's, it's so common. It is so common. And 1956 was the original. Okay. So it's even older than I thought. Wow. That's back, like, I, I hear 1956, I picture, like, the witch doctor. You know, like, that's kind of what I would think Halloween song from that Monster Mash, witch doctor, um, you know, those kinds of things. So, yep. And Carlin's got it, too. And she's a lot younger than me. So, it's crazy. Like, it makes you wonder what the catalyst is. Is it something in our food supply? Is it something that's always been around but never been diagnosed before because I guarantee that there are kids that from my generation were just labeled a problem child when in actuality it was probably ADHD or something like that. But they just weren't diagnosing it then. So I find this stuff interesting. All right, more spooky songs, guys, in the comments. So we've got, let's see. Oh, so Aaron says he did actually do the witch doctor vibe at times, even did the bone through his nose. Really? All right, I want to look up more about this dude. He sounds fun. Um, yeah, that's. I used to have, well, I, I borrowed it from my dad, but I had the witch doctor on a 45. And I'm trying to remember what was on the other side of it because I always used to love the B-sides of stuff. Um, it might have been... One-eyed, one horn flying, purple people leader. I think that was the 45. I think it was purple people leader on one side and the witch doctor on the other. And then he had another one that had, they're coming to take me away, which I love that song too. Um, okay. And my sister has another one with spooky, scary skeletons. I don't know who does that either, but I know the song. Let me look it up because that was in, was that in a kid's show or was that, um, hmm. I know my kids used to sing it all the time and you would sing it with them, sissy. Andrew Gold. Okay. I wouldn't have guessed Andrew Gold if he gave me a million guesses, but spooky, scary skeletons. And Erica says, I see David Seville doing Witch Doctor. Yes. With the, the chipmunks, right? I remember that version. Aaron says, my dad had the same ones, right? I miss 45s. That's cool. And Carlin says, the monster mash. Yes. Lizzie says, Oingo Boingo, Dead Man's Party, classic. And so is No One Lives Forever. I love that one for Halloween and year round as well. Um, and of course, Weird Science. You know, those are my top three on Good Boy Goes right there is Dead Man's Party, No One Lives Forever, and uh, Weird Science. But then there's also, um, oh, shit. It just flew out of my head. It's not Wild, is it Wild Sex? Is that the name of the song by Good Boy Go? That would be, I, I have a top four then, because I'm pretty sure that it's, all right, it's not going to show up easily. I can picture it in my head. Yeah, Wild Sex in the working class. I like that one too. Um, yeah, Leah says, who's writing this down? That's what I'm saying. Somebody somebody, drop this down. We have to have our Learning Go Go Halloween playlist. Thanks to Erica for bringing it up. That is awesome. 
Uh, Aaron says Bark at the Moon and Bad Moon Rising. Okay, yes, Bark at the Moon by Ozzy. And I'm guessing Bad Moon Rising is, I see a bad moon rising, you know, that everybody's saying there's a bathroom on the right. Is that, is that, that, that Bad Moon Rising? Um, Erica says, you're doing it fast. Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to get them saved. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll have to uh, go back over it. The thing is, some of the comments are from YouTube and some are from Facebook, and I haven't figured out how to see the, um, the YouTube ones after the fact. Like, I'm so YouTube challenged. Like, I click on comments and then nothing shows up. So let's see here. What we can do is if I open a note. So we started with, let's see here. We started with, oh my goodness, we do have a bunch already. There was, okay, the Crip Jam. I don't think I can type that fast. Thriller. And then we had Calling All the Monsters, which I don't know. What is that from, Sissy? Is that like a song on the radio or is that from something? Because I don't know Calling All the Monsters. I know there's like a Calling All You Angels song, I'm pretty sure. Um, let's see here. So then we have Monster by Skillet. And then... Do you guys know Monster by Fred Schneider from the B-52s? That's not a spooky song. That's a ridiculously silly song. Um, but I love it because it's like, there's a monster in my pants and it does a naughty dance. Like, it's hilarious. It's just really, really stupid. But I like that song. So, yeah, I put a spell on you. And then we have... Do, 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 do. We talked about I've been a spell on you for a while. We talked about ADD. Easy as one, two. Hey, a butterfly. Okay, witch doctor and purple people eater. And purple people eater. Did uh, the, the chipmunks do purple people eater too? I can kind of hear them singing it in my head, but I don't know if that's just me coming up with that or if that actually happened because it seems like it should have if it didn't. Let's see, David Seville, Monster Mash. There's a um, Scooby-Doo mystery mix that I used to have on a Halloween um, playlist that I had. And I can't find it anymore because once it got harder to like appropriate music off of the internet like spotify doesn't always have the the really bizarre things i haven't been able to find it and i want to i think i might still have it on a cd somewhere but i need to find it because my cds are scattered to the winds as well let's say here all right, so I'm up to Bad Moon Rising. So now we have the Beetlejuice Broadway soundtrack. I know some of those because my youngest was listening to it for a while, but I'm not that familiar. Um, just saw Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So I don't know if the rest of you guys have seen that. If you've seen it, tell me what you think with no spoilers because some people have not seen it. But... I think it had ups and downs, but more ups than downs. That's my, that's my consensus. I liked it. Let's see. Who did which doctor that someone mentioned? Um, let me see if I can find a version that's not David Seville, because I feel like it wasn't. Um, Don Lang. I think that's who it was. It just came up as Don Lang. I want to play it, but I don't want to get in trouble again like I did last time I played music on my podcast. <laughs> Carlin says, oops, <laughs> Elise says, geez, you make me laugh. Carlin says, Disney Channel song, if you if you ask, my kids, they would know, not sure. If my older daughter would know. Oh, is that the, the song I was asking you about? Okay, Sheb Woolley. Okay, there seems to be a lot of versions, actually, because there's a 
Chris Classic, Distot, The Coasters. That sounds like a very like 50s name, The Coasters. Devo apparently did a version of Witch Doctor. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so another one that was on... Uh, Oh, here we go. Aaron has the Ghostbusters theme and Deo. So who originally did Deo? Because that is in Beetlejuice. Um, but who did? Oh, Harry Belafonte, of course. The Banana Boat song. And let's see. This is Halloween. Isn't that from a movie? Yes, that is from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And that is a fantastic song. Um, I like that whole soundtrack, actually. And the guy that voiced Oogie Boogie just passed away, which is very sad because I love that character. And I love Lock, Shock, and Barrel, too. And one of them is Paul Rubens, who is Pee Wee Herman. And I love that as well. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's a fantastic movie soundtrack. And I used to have like a club song that was the Halloween theme song. And then it was like a little girl that I guess it was a little girl, but it had just been a little kid that was like, do you believe in the boogeyman? You know, and it'd be the da -da 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 -da. So, oh, here we go. Aaron says, I'm your boogeyman by Casey and the Sunshine Band. There you go. That's a good one. And um, didn't, I'm your boogeyman, didn't um, Rob Zombie? remake that as well or is it a different song that's just called i'm your boogeyman because i think rob zombie has that which could of course go into dragula and um yep aaron said or rob zombie yes but dragula is another great rob zombie song living dead girl is another great one i like hellbilly deluxe is a good album um but those are some of my favorites from that that could be used for Halloween as well. Carlin, you have never seen The Nightmare Before Christmas? <gasps> she knows the song from Just Dance. We're going to have to fix that. You're going to have to come over and watch Nightmare Before Christmas with me because it's a great movie. Um, I can't believe you haven't seen that with our older brother and his wife because they are obsessed with that movie. Hmm. So also typo negative, black number one or Christian woman are both good choices for a Halloween thing. Um, Cinnamon Girl's good too. It's a little slow. Let's see. Repeat what Aaron said. Oh, that's right. You can't see him. Um, I'm Your Boogeyman by Casey and the Sunshine Band or Rob Zombie because there's two different versions. Oh, she already did black number one. Very nice. Very good. And Aaron says, Oogie Boogie, rest in peace. Yes, like I said, he uh, he just recently passed away. He had such a great voice. And that character, I just love Oogie Boogie, man. He's awesome. Um, let's see here. Carlin said, borrow ween EP. I have no idea what that is. What's borrowing? Is that something I should know? I don't know. Tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah, there's so many like, <laughs> she just said you have heard it. Okay. I will look that up as well. Um, I'm trying to think back to these Halloween CDs because like a lot of Alice Cooper is good Halloween stuff too. You know, Welcome to My Nightmare. Even he's back from uh, Friday the 13th, part six, the theme song to that. The man behind the mask. I love that song. Um, yeah, he, he has some good stuff. Um, even Poison, like one of his quote unquote newer, <laughs> newer songs from 40 years ago. Um, <laughs> that could work too. Aaron is saying Blue Moon, like the one from, um, do they sing that in Greece where they have their, like, they pull their pants down and they're shaking their butts? 
That's what I think of when I think of the song Blue Moon. Do you know who sings it? Put it in the comments if you do. Um, Carlin says, I played it in the car on our way back from the drive-in movie trip, um, when we went to Termathon. I was seeing cross-eyed by the time I drove us home. And all I remember is uh, nephew talking about mush mouth and <laughs> all that. I don't remember you playing a song at all. So you'll have to play it for me again. Let's see. Oh, and Aaron says, yes, but also American Werewolf in London. I have still not seen that. I need to see that. That's a classic. And Erica says, I saw you standing. Well, yeah, I, I'm 99% sure that's the blue moon that Aaron is talking about. I'm not going to sing that and burst you guys' ears. But yeah, pretty sure that is one in the same. Um, there's probably a lot of moon songs, actually. Or songs that reference um, the moon in one way or another. Okay, Aaron says the Marcells are the artist, Erica, of Blue Moon, if you hadn't gotten the the artist yet. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> but that's another classic. I wonder what year that's from. Let me look it up. I'm so curious. I love music. I love when we talk about music, guys, because you guys always introduce me to songs that oh, 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 shh, we don't want to get in trouble, Marcel. Let's see. Oh, they're from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Check that out. Uh, let's see here. I was hoping that it was 1961, the Marcel's. Um, yes. Erica, Aaron is uh, commenting on YouTube. So if you can see him on YouTube, then you guys can connect on there because it's showing you on Facebook here, but you might be on both. So, um, yeah, so Fred Johnson, who I believe was the singer of the Marcells, let's say here. Baritone vocalist Richard now teamed with Fred Johnson, Gene Bricker, blah, 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 blah. But um, Fred Johnson, I guess, was the last surviving member, and he died in 2022. So that's fairly recently. But that was definitely a classic song. Good choice. I love that. Um, oh, yes, Little Red Riding Hood by Sam the Sham and Pharaoh. So I used to have a Little Red Riding Hood costume for work. It's nothing I would go trick-or-treating around the neighborhood in, but it was for work. And they would play Little Red Riding Hood when I danced to that for the Halloween party. So I know exactly what song that is. Um, yes, and Aaron, Erica is the Luna Projects on YouTube. So if you guys want to connect there. And uh, my sister said, Somebody watching me. And yes, Erica, it's Rockwell and Michael Jackson, back when people would do background vocals without needing a gazillion bajillion dollars to do it. Let's see. Aaliyah says she got freaked out by the police song, I'll be watching you. Yeah, every breath you take, people were using as like a wedding song. It's a stalker song. It's not a romantic, happy song. It's a, I'm following you because I'm obsessed with you in a very unhealthy way song so mm -hmm. that's a good choice too actually uh and that's funny because Def Leppard had um in the early 90s I can't remember the name of the album but I believe it's the one where the woman's looking in the mirror and it looks like a skull I can't think of the name of the uh the album now I can picture it though but they had a song called Two Steps Behind and it was like the same idea you know it's like Wherever you go, I'll be two steps behind you. No, you're a freaking stalker. That's not like a romantic thing. That's a, you know, like you're not going to get away from me. Let's see here. She said, no, stop playing it. Oh, hey, it was on Adrenalized, different album. My bad. But it was still Def Leppard. Um, the Cramps, Goo Goo Muck. Good song. That was in Wednesday, wasn't it? 
Wasn't that the song that she was dancing to? Pretty sure. Yep, and Ellie is echoing stalker and toxic. Yes, 100%. And Sting has even said that. Like, people are, you know, thinking it's all this romantic song. There was another one like that. Um, I know it wasn't, it wasn't a romantic thing. It was uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Relax. And they were like, do people realize what the lyrics are about? They're going around singing it. And I'm like, yeah, we all knew what it was about. Oh, Lizzie Has Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Another great, great song. That's a classic as well. And uh, Carlin says, did anyone put the Adams Family yet? Adams Family, good theme song and another good musical. If you guys are not familiar with the Adams Family musical, that's got some good songs as well. My youngest was in that. Their school did the, the musical and it was really good. When you're in Adams, I love the Adams family. I wanted to be more Tesha. So bad. Good stuff. I'm trying to think of some more like um, spooky, ooky songs. Like, because I know on my Halloween mix, I had Abigail by King Diamonds. I love that song. And I had, like I said, that Halloween mix um, with the Halloween theme song. But again, that's that's like the mystery mix with Scooby-Doo. I haven't been able to find them again ever since I just like tripped across them on the internet. I don't even know if it was actually called mystery mix um, or if I just called it that. Scooby-Doo, but it's the... Hmm. I'll have to see if I can find it because I'm getting like Scooby snacks from Fun Loving Criminals. <laughs> which I love that song too. Um, but yeah, oh, Monster by Fred Schneider. If you didn't put that one on there, Erica, we were talking about that. And let's see here. Grim Grinning Ghosts. I don't know that one. It's fun to say though. Grim Grinning Ghosts. It's like Irish wristwatch. It's fun to say. Um, who is that by? Because I'm not familiar with this song, Grim Grinning Ghosts. How about like Cemetery Gates by Pantera? That's a good one. I like that song a lot. And that gives kind of a, you know. Oh, okay. Aaron said it's the Haunted Mansion song at Disney. Okay. I haven't been to the Haunted Mansion in probably 35 years, so I don't remember the song, but that's really cool. There's got to be more, like, ghost songs, because you figure how many generations have been telling ghost stories. They would have had to have been put to song. I know, like, Corey's Coming by Harry Chapin, but that's not one you'd want on a Halloween playlist. Um... But yeah, there's got to be like more in the King Diamond vein because his voice like leans to that or like something Dio or <laughs> Erica says she should just be writing these down instead of trying to save it on YouTube. I have a list of most of them. Um, so I, I probably should catch up, but I have most of them in this uh, little note in my phone. I just wrote down superstition and it auto-corrected to superstitious. And there was a song by Europe called superstitious, which again, not really Halloween list appropriate, but it kind of just like cracked me up that I have a brain cell that remembers that song. <laughs> Let's see. And Aaron says, I haven't either just into dead things. Okay. That's fair. That is very fair. There's a song by Wrathchild America called Smothered Life that is about being buried alive. So that might be an appropriate one for the list. I'm going to put this on the list too. It's called uh, Silent Darkness, Smothered Life in parentheses by Wrathchild America. And cool, so that has entered the building. Um, 
Oh, awesome. Aaron said that he'll compile a list of songs and send them to you later. Might mean me, might mean you, Erica, but if it's me, I will make sure that you get them for your spooky songs list because there's just so many and they're so good. I love spooky season. It just makes my little heart happy. <laughs> I love the, like I said, the burning leaves smell, you know, that like crisp air, even though I'm not a cold weather person when it's that like shorts and hoodie weather, that's my favorite. I love it when it's like right in between hot and cold. It's too hot to be cold and too cold to be hot. That's like the perfect time. And you can sleep with the windows open and it's just comfortable. I love that. That is awesome. Uh, my sister's asking if there is a reason that you're making a spooky songs list, Erica. I think it's probably just for fun, for entertainment. But I could be wrong. Um, Erica has been doing a like song of the day challenge for, she started with, I think a month and now she's doing a year. So it's pretty cool. If you're doing all spooky ones for October, that's pretty awesome. Um, but I'll see what, what she says. And I'm like determined now to find these Halloween CDs because, um, a lot of the songs that we've mentioned, I know are on them, but I know I'm missing some too. Like, uh, let's see here. So she said, it's because I'm doing the song of the day, but for Rocktober trying for spooky. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So the song of the day challenge, but with a spooky twist. Very cool. And Aaliyah says for a workout session, I would love to do that. I don't know if you guys saw my uh, Cabo Ray pictures that I, posted um because I took god it's probably been two years ago now when I did like the ghost and I was trying to be funny but I had like a Halloween list for that and I'm just I want to be able to dance again like this injury is killing me and I haven't been able to work out like I normally do and it's annoying and it's really like taking a toll on my mental health as well to not be able to you know, like physically work out like I used to, it, it just sucks. So I'm just waiting to get through to uh, the next chapter when I'm able to, again, I'm looking, cause I'm like, maybe I actually have a Halloween playlist on here from that. Oh, I do. Duh me. Okay. Hold on. It's on my Spotify. So in here we have thriller. We have Abigail. We have Dragula zombie by the cranberries. Hadn't mentioned that one. Uh, let's see here. Running with the Devil, Van Halen. Cool. Uh, Living Dead, Dance Macabre. Is that how you say it? Macabre? Dance Macabre from Ghost. That's a good one. Nightmare on My Street by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. The Monster by Eminem and Rihanna. I'm going to have to like send you a screenshot of this, Erica. Um, Silent Darkness, I said, Bury My Lovely by The October Project. That's a good one, too. Scared by Dangerous Toys. And I've got I'm Your Boogeyman, the white zombie version on here. Feed My Frankenstein by Alice Cooper. Bark at the Moon, Dead Man's Party. Dream Warriors by Dokken is another good one. Black number one. I have This Is Halloween, Sissy. It's on here. Uh, Aaron, my God, I'm an idiot. This is like my favorite movie. Cry Little Sister from The Lost Boys. Of course. Of course. Duh. Yes, I love that song. Um, Do the Necronomicon by Evil Dead, the musical. Um, is it called Evil Dead, the musical? I think that is what it's called. If not, it's a musical of Evil Dead. But I'm pretty sure it's called Evil Dead, the musical. Do the Necronomicon's good, but what the fuck was that? That's like my favorite song from that musical. It's hilarious. Uh, Boogie Woogie Woo by Insane Clown Posse. And uh, yes, Necronomicon as in the Book of the Dead. If you've ever seen Evil Dead 2 and he like, I think the Necronomicons and all of the Evil Dead movies. 
but it's like the book that's, you know, like bound in human skin and it has the face on it. Aaliyah says Black Widow by Alice Cooper. Another one. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Rock Until You Drop from the Monster Squad. I don't know that one. And Erica says, you know, I have. Yes, I figured. I figured. Uh, I have Zydrate Anatomy from Repo the Genetic Opera. Love that movie as well. Uh, weird Science. Love Song for a Vampire by Annie Lennox, which is awesome. That is from Dracula. Um, the Dracula where he's got the big butt head. Why can't I? Bram Stoker's Dracula. So that's another good one. Once Bitten by Three Speed. I don't know that one. I saw Once Bitten and I just twice shot, you know, I went to Great White in my head. I don't know Once Bitten by Three Speed. I'll have to check that out. That sounds like a, another fun vampire song. I love that. Um, and then I have The Crypt Jam is the last song on this Halloween thing. But they have Welcome to My Nightmare, Alice Cooper. Magic Dance from Labyrinth. Dance, magic, dance, which is cool. But Within You would be a good one from Labyrinth. That one's kind of more like, oh, you know, that's when they were dancing. Everything I've done, I've done for you. I move the stars for no one. I freaking love David Bowie. Ha, ah, those leggings. Rest in peace, sir. Oh, let's see here. Make Love Till Die. I don't know that one. Who's that by? Interesting. That sounds like an interesting song. But I can't believe that I didn't think of Cry Little Sister. Like, that's in my everyday playlist. I'm ashamed. I'm going to have to go hang my head in shame. Um, but yeah, there's like... Like, Love Song for a Vampire is beautiful by Annie Lennox. I love that song. I feel like there were more songs from that soundtrack that were popular when it came out, but I don't remember now because um, I think that was in college. Or if that was in college. I was in college when that came out. Um, okay. Am I searching? There we go. Yeah, not brand, not like brand flakes, brand <laughs> stokers, Dracula. Okay. Included in premium. Now playlist, playlist. It looks like people made playlists, but I don't see. Oh, wait, here we go. Dracula, the beginning, vampire hunters. Do, 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 do. Nope, maybe not. None of those sound familiar. Okay, maybe the Annie Lennox song is the only one that I know. Um, but it's very pretty. And Aaron says, by SSQ, it's when trash comes back to life in Return of the Living Dead. Uh, okay. And Aaliyah says, there's a song from the Eurythmics, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, their most popular one would have been Sweet Dreams Are Made of These. And then... Um, here comes the rain again. But the love song for vampires, Annie Lennox, from You're in the Mix. So maybe that's that's what you're thinking. Because she has like walking on broken glass and little bird. Um, then she went off on a Christmas tangent for a little bit. Uh, oh, okay. Well, wake me up inside. That is Evanescence. Um, bring me to life. That's a good one. That's good for this list. Um, and she also has Immortal Beloved by Evanescence is beautiful. Um, Aaron says Killer Clowns by the Dickies. That came up in my recommended songs when I was looking at the Halloween playlist. So that's really funny that you said that. Um, nope, you are closely. It's an E band. You know, there's not that many bands that start with E. So you get credit for that. Don't even worry about it. You are close. Multi-syllable E band. I'm giving you credit. Um, and Amy Lee's voice is beautiful. Uh, even like Broken, the duet that she did is like a, that's kind of vibey for this time of year too. 
And that song always cracks me up because my younger brother told me that when when he listens to Broken, it sounds like I can't think of the guy's name right now. I think he's from Seether. But when he says, uh, I want to hold you high and steal your pain, it sounds like he says your pen. So it's like every time the song comes on, I'm like, hide your pens. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Erica says, so you're on YouTube live too. Oh, probably learning go-go. Yes, I am on my uh, learning go-go YouTube. I have too many platforms. I need to like <laughs> condense so that it's not so hard to find which one I'm on. Because I was like doing it on all of the the different ones like Sydney Author, Sydney, Learn and Go Go, and then on YouTube on Sydney Author and Learn and Go Go. And people were commenting and I couldn't see them. So that's why I'm like, I'm just doing the two so that I can see what everybody's saying because they were getting lost in the ether and I don't want to miss what you guys are saying. So, but then it's like trying to tell people, come over here. We're over here. So hopefully, you know, in time people will, will find it because I love talking to you guys. It's awesome. Donovan, Season of the Witch. Yes. Didn't Donovan sing Mellow Yellow, too? They call me Mellow Yellow. <laughs> oh, well, he is saying Evanescence at karaoke years ago. I would love to hear that. That is awesome. And Erica said, yep, the Sydney author page on YouTube. And then I also have the learn. I think it's Learning Go Go the podcast is what it's called. Let me look it up real quick. YouTube.com. What is it called? <laughs> it is. Yes, at Learning Go Go, the podcast is the YouTube that I am on right now. Let's see. And Sissy says, I don't think I subscribed to that yet. Well, what are you waiting for? Just kidding. Dave went down to Georgia. What's my husband doing? I'm just kidding. I know you meant devil went down to Georgia. That's a good one. Um, I love that song. I used to sing that when I was little because I remember. Um, did you see his name just fly right out of my head? <laughs> the Frank. Why can't I think of the person that sings it? It's a. Charlie Daniels, I thought of it before I looked it up. I used to sing that all the time because I remember in the 80s, they used to have those variety shows on on the weekends and I would be at my mom and pop-ups and they'd have them on. And I remember Charlie Daniels was on one singing it and I thought like, you know, chicken in the bread pan, pick it up. I thought that was the funniest shit ever. And I used to sing it all the time. And then like I discovered his album that has that on that. And I loved Easy Rider. Like there were so many songs on there that, I probably shouldn't have been singing, but I was. And Aaliyah says, don't forget Instagram. Yes, you know what's stupid about Instagram? One thing that's stupid about Instagram, when you make an account and then you make subsequent accounts under that first account, you can't log into the other one separately. So I can't stream this on my Learning Go Go Instagram because I can't log into it separately. Isn't that stupid? I think that's stupid. But I will figure it out because I am a figure outer and I will make this happen. Yes, Werewolves of London is a very good Halloween song as well. Um, I feel like there should be more werewolf songs. There's not that many songs about werewolves or shapeshifters in general. Let's get on that. Let's make some uh, some shape shifting songs. That's hard to say. Shapeshifter songs. And yay, Erica and Aaron are saying hi on YouTube. I'm so glad you guys connected on there. That's awesome. Let's see, Twilight. Well, there's a song. Do you mean like the movie Twilight or is there a song Twilight? Because there's a song that's like, heavenly shades of night are falling. It's Twilight time. Another song I pulled out of my butt. It's Twilight time. Like, I, I remember that song. Um. <laughs> And only said yes to Twilight the movie or my horrible rendition of Twilight Time of <laughs> oh, the movie. I have never seen it because I don't, I'm, I'm too much of a, uh, 
Lost Boys like fanatic to to admit that the Twilight people are actually vampires. Time Warp, yes, from Rocky Horror Picture Show. We're circling back around to Rocky Horror Picture Show. Fantastic. Aaron says, The Midnight Hour. I feel like I should know what song that is. But my brain's going to After Midnight, and then it was going to Midnight by Skid Row. But I'm not placing The Midnight Hour. So I'll have to look that up to see what that is. Because I'm sure I know it. I just don't um, don't know it off the top of my head. You could also add uh, Lost in the Shadows from the Lost Boys soundtrack. Which I always thought was Sail into the Night, Lost in the Shadows. It's Say Hello to the Night. Which I think is cornier than Sail into the Night. <laughs> which is how I used to sing it. When they're like on their dirt bikes on the, the beach and they get Michael to join them and they're like, you just got to keep up and, you know, and we're all supposed to pretend that they're actually riding bikes, not sitting stationary on the miniset. Love the movie. Let's see here. Aaron says, I'm going to wait till the midnight hour. That's when my love comes tumbling. Oh, I'm going to wait till the midnight hour. Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh. see, I knew I knew it. Excellent. Thank you. That's a good one too. Very good. Uh, let's see here. Cause it's gotta be midnight songs, werewolf songs, vampire, witch songs. Um, there's gotta be witchy songs, like witchy woman. We already said, I'll put a spell on you. They did that in Hocus Pocus too, didn't they? Pretty sure that they, uh, the witches sing that. Let's see. Uh, Erica says, so this is weird because this is more live than the YouTube version I connected to. Yeah, I've noticed there's a, um, there's like a, a delay on the YouTube comments and I don't understand why because it should be streaming at the same time. Technology is wonky. Yay, my sister found me on YouTube. Subscribe, push that subscribe button, please. And yes, the Eagles with witchy one. <laughs> We've got all of these songs that start with the same letter. It's hard to say. And yes, Aaliyah, Bette Midler doing um, I'll Put a Spell on You and Hocus Pocus, which I need to watch that soon. I was late to the Hocus Pocus train. I only saw it for the first time like maybe two years ago, maybe three years ago. But it took me a, a while to uh, watch it. And once I did, I loved it. So I don't know why it took me so long to check it out, but good movie. And the second one was not bad either. I, I enjoyed the second one too. Uh, yeah. Hocus Pocus too. Yes. <laughs> That's what I just, yep. Great minds. House of the Rising Sun by the Animals. That's a good one too. Wasn't that Mojo Raz? No, wait, that's The Doors though, right? Mr. Mojo Raz. But I know House of the Rising Sun. I know that one too. And Erica says, great song, Lizzie. I should add you both to the playlist. Yes. Or all of you. Yes. Yes. We can all contribute. That would be fun. And then you'll have like the an even bigger list to choose from because there's so many good songs. Um, yeah. I was just singing. I think it's The Doors, right? With Mr. Mojo Razin. It's Jim Morrison in my head. But I can't think of the name of the song. It's a uh, house in New Orleans. No, nah, isn't that House of the Rising Sun? The hell, I'm confusing myself. Let me look it up because it's going to drive me nuts. Eh, I type Moo instead of Mojo. <laughs> See stupid nails. Uh, oh, it's an LA woman. Oh, it's the end part of LA. Okay, okay, okay. Now I know that. Yes, Duran Duran, Hungry Like the Wolf. That's another good wolf song. And that's another one I used to go around singing, not knowing what I was talking about, especially the end part with the woman like moaning. Yeah, that was probably not what I should have been doing at nine years old, but it's a good song. I like it. Oh. 
And you already said about little Miss Little Miss Brad, Little Red Riding Hood. Um, are there any like goblin songs or like leprechaun songs? <laughs> I'm trying to think of more like things you see during Halloween. There's got to be um, like a song about a mummy. All I keep thinking is like uh, the Monster Mash because that names all of them. Yes, Three Days Grace, Animal I Have Become is a fantastic song. I love that song. I love that whole era of Three Days Grace. I used to listen to them all the time, but then Adam left and I never really listened to the stuff after he wasn't singing anymore, but I love the old Three Days Grace. Um, it was like Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin. They all had that same kind of sound to them and I liked them a lot. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. We said run in with the devil. And then you could do like 666 from Iron Maiden. And there's a song um, called The Sixth Gate. I think it's by D Devil. Let me look it up because that's in my, that's on my playlist that you get if you buy a personalized copy of my book. Yes, D Devils is the name of the group. That's like a, um, it's like a dance song. But the um, the devil voice reminds me of like something you'd see in South Park or something. It's it's ridiculous. That's why I like that song. Uh, let's see. Elias says, "What about those cartoon Dracula movies? Cartoon Dracula movies." When you said that, my brain went to like Bugs Bunny and Dracula. When you, know, I am a vampire. I am an umpire. <laughs> you know. Uh, Oh, you're talking to Hotel Transylvania. Dracula's daughter married a redheaded kid. They are so funny. I love those movies. I do not say blah, blah, blah. <laughs> those movies are fantastic. I love them. Yes, Devil Inside by um, In Excess, Aaron. Yes, very good choice. That's a great song. That's, you know, talk about somebody that left too soon. Michael Hutchins died in 1997, I believe, which is just crazy. It's just cuckoo crazy. Oh, thank you. Um, just so everybody knows on the Learned in Go Go Facebook page, Erica, under her Luna Projects page, put uh, let's make a playlist together, join to add videos, and it's for her YouTube page so we can all add to her playlist. Thank you so much. That is awesome. And yes, has it been that long? I am 99% sure it was 1997. Pretty, pretty sure. Um, because it's weird, like certain years stick out to me, and part of me wonders if it's because like, I have a weird thing about odd numbers and I don't like them. So I think that's why they stick out to me in my head, which is why I remember it was 97. But like I said, I could be completely making that up. So let me look it up here. Michael Hutchins. 1997, November 22nd. Wow. That's crazy. Um, Yes, yeah, so Aaliyah, there's um, the link in the, the comments. I'll see if I can, if you can't find it, I'll like go and tag you under the comments so you can find it. Um, and then when you click on it, I'm guessing it'll go to her YouTube and then you can join there, I'm guessing. Um, excuse me, man, I'm sorry. I'm like drinking bubbly stuff and it's making me burp. Sorry about that. Um, but no, that's really, that's a great idea that we can all add to it. I see it. It doesn't work. We'll figure it out. We gotcha. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Let's see here. I can't even see it. Now I see your flag though, Erica, and everybody else's flag is gone. It's so funny with the flags. I didn't even know that was a thing. It's like when you get um, 
the the notification that you got a top fan for a page you've never even heard of and it's like yay i'm your top fan who are you <laughs> that always cracks me up okay aaron just posted one i have not even thought of in many 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 years but i used to love this song ghost riders in the sky that reminds me of being a kid i don't know what i saw the song on but i love this song um i feel like they use it in disney like the the country bear jamboree or something too but i love that song i totally forgot about that one that's a great one <laughs> i love it i'm gonna be thinking about that because that goes in my head i go from like that to like Rocky Top, you know, Rocky Top, Tennessee, like that just popped into my head after that one. Like you've unlocked a couple brain cells that have been laying dormant for a while. So that's going to be fun to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> that's great. Like I'm picturing people singing. Was it on Hee Haw? Like I can just picture, I have this odd memory of that song. That's so funny. Wow. Yeah, I can't. I have to think about what that's from. But man, this has been fun. This is, We've come up with some good songs, guys. Like some that I haven't thought of in a very, very long time. Um, so yeah, like I feel like there should be some Stevie Nicks songs because she's so witchy. But like, you know, Leather and Lace doesn't really fit for Halloween. Like I'm just picturing her, you know, well, I guess Gypsy. Gypsy would work. Um, yeah, I'm just picturing her on stage spinning with all her flowy stuff. That's pretty cool. Who else is witchy? There's got to be more like, um, I'm picturing the female singers with like the layers of, because <laughs> we've done Evanescence and I had October Project. Her voice is very like haunting. Um, would be a good name for it. Amazing Devil has some good songs. I don't know if you're familiar with The Amazing Devil. Um, if you watch the, the show The Witcher, the guy that was the bard is, um, The Amazing Devil is his band. But they're very, they sound like the bard. <laughs> you know, they're very like um, kind of what you would picture people singing in England and like this, 1500s you know like it's that kind of music um but it's it's really cool like they have the first song i i knew by them was um called farewell wonderlust and then they came out with a album called ruin and i really love like the whole ruin album um i really haven't listened to much off of the farewell wonderlust album except for that song i need to explore more but that's a really kind of creepy cool sound sound too but on that note, I think that I'm going to wrap this up. But this has been so much fun. I really, really appreciate you guys hopping on with me on all the different platforms. I love watching you guys go from one to the other. That's really cool. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending your Wednesday night with me. And thank you, Erica, for coming up with the spooky songless idea because this was super duper fun. Um, and I can't wait to see what everybody adds to your list on YouTube. And if you're watching this after the fact, um, make sure that you get the link so that you can add to it as well, because I figured the more the merrier, right? Like there's going to be all kinds of music on there. And I know as soon as I wrap this up, I'll, I'm going to think of like 20 more songs. Um, let's see. Elise says, I looked up the Luna projects and it has the black label. I don't know what the black label is. I'm sorry, but we'll connect you guys for sure. We will figure it out. Um, and Erica says, whoopsies, trying to figure out how to add people to collaborate. So yeah, she said doesn't work, but we will figure this out. I'm not sure what the black label is either other than Johnny Walker, which I'm sure is not what she's talking about. <laughs> or like black label society, Zach Wild. Um, but yeah, we'll figure it out. And if not, um, 
if you guys connect on Facebook, then maybe Aaliyah can send you songs and then you can add them yourself, Erica. Whatever works. If it doesn't work like as a full collaboration, we can still make it work. So, because that's what we do. We are solution seekers in this community. And I appreciate you guys and I love you and thank you so much for joining me. And if you haven't already, you can get your copy of Everything I Need to Know, I Learned in Go-Go, How a Preacher's Daughter Pole Danced Her Way to Finding Her True Self. Um, oh yeah, in that vein, I think Erica asked me what happened. I, I have tendonitis in my rotator cuff, so I can't lift my left arm. Like I'm not supposed to lift it over my head at all. Um, and I was having, I had a headache for 17 straight days. Not good, I think it's gone. Um, so like I really wasn't working out other than doing my minute long plank that I do every day. Like I, today's the first day I've done an additional workout and it was 15 minutes on the bike because I just can't physically handle too much. But I'm about to just one handed right hand this puppy because, hey, where is it? Because I miss dancing. So even if I just get up here and do the Charleston, at least it's something. So, but I just realized I didn't answer and I saw you ask that in the comments. That's what's going on with me. I had acupuncture again today. I have six needles in my back as I talk on this podcast. Um, so hopefully they'll loosen everything up because what my doctor told me is I hold tension in my neck, which sucks in my shoulders and pulls on the rotator cuff, which then pulls on my neck. And it's just a vicious cycle, but this too shall pass. So just to share what I meant by that. But uh, yeah, so again, thank you guys so, so, so much for hopping on with me. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. I love sharing what everybody is up to. If there's something you have going on that you want me to give you a shout out, always put it in the comments because I'm super happy to do that so that everybody, we can all follow each other. We can all lift each other up and keep the positivity flowing because that is what it's about. Because remember, when life is giving you shit, take it head on because when you stick your head in the sand, you think you're hiding, but the rest of the world just sees a big ass. Love you. <laughs>